Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second session in this four-part webinar series of the Oracle 11G Rackathon online conference at BrainSurface. I am Tarek Farouk, and am honored to be co-presenting the session today, along with our team of expert panelists. Joining us for the second time is Oracle ace, Sayed Jafar Hussain. Sayed Hi, everyone. Certified master and Oracle certified RAC expert and the co-author of the upcoming Oracle Lemon G handbook. He currently works as the chief database architect at one of the largest financial institutions in the Middle East. Welcome and thanks for joining us, Sayed. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. Also joining us today for the second time is Oracle ace Jeremy Schneider. Jeremy is an Oracle RAC certified expert as well as Oracle as well as a Linux certified expert and he's also the author of the Rack Attack Lab Handbook. Jeremy's an accomplished author, blogger, formizer and actively makes appearances within the Oracle speaking circuit. Currently works as a senior architect consultant for a financial services firm in the greater Chicago area. Thanks for joining us today, Jeremy. Hello from the cold city of Chicago. <laughs> also joining us today is Oracle Ace, Dr. Bert Scalzo. He is one of the most well-known, accomplished, and respected figures in the industry. He currently works as a database domain expert and guru at Quest Software. Bert is also the author of 10 Oracle books. Welcome and thanks for joining us, Bert. Glad to be here. Welcome from the site of this year's Super Bowl. Awesome. And a little bit about me, I'm an Oracle ACE, an Oracle RAC certified expert, and hold several Oracle certifications. I've been working as an Oracle technologist for the last 17 plus years. Currently I'm working for a Fortune 21 health services firm uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. So today we, were, we are going to set up, configure, install, and test a two-node rack cluster on Oracle VM VirtualBox over the Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5 x64 platform. And we have a lot of material to cover today. We're going to jump right in. You might want to let them know which version of uh, virt the virtual box that you're using since there's a new one out. Sure. We are using the, the latest and greatest versions of all technologies involved in this presentation. To answer uh, Bert's question, we're using Oracle VM VirtualBox 4, which was recently released in December and has a bunch of great new features added to it, like extension packs, an enhanced GUI, uh, shared folders, uh, greater RAM support, and a whole bunch of other great features. Okay. So in order to save time, we are quickly going to enter in all the required prompts in all the fields of the grid infrastructure OUI, which is the Oracle Universal Installer, and kick off the grid infrastructure install process. After it's done, we will go back and talk about what we did. So this is the first screen, as you can see. Go ahead. Do you think you could uh, just quickly show us the prompt, just so we can see the command that you typed to open this window? Sure. So. I basically, what I did was I 
unzipped and inflated all the files that came with the grid infrastructure media pack into a staging directory. And I ran the run installer command to fire off the OUI. So I'm going to select the first option because this is a brand new install installation. Because this is a virtualized environment on my Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit edition laptop, uh, it's a pretty beefy machine, but it's consuming almost all of the resources. It's pretty much pegged as far as memory is concerned. I'm going to select the typical installation option. Again, all of this that what you're seeing today is available in the form of a comprehensive installation guide, which is available for viewing on demand at brainsurface.com. And within that guide, going back to the previous screen, I basically show an advanced installation. Here, because we're short of time, I took the typical installation route, which is a little bit faster. So I just typed in the scan name. I'm going to quickly give you an overview of what scan is. It's a new feature with 11G R2. It stands for single client access name and is used for high availability, high availability purposes. Uh, you can use it to, to use a grid naming service or GNS with scan. Essentially what it is, is it's a virtual IP name similar uh, to the WIP names that you use for your individual cluster nodes. But unlike an individual node, it's not, it's not, it's not hardwired or associated with a single node. It's affiliated with the whole grid or the whole cluster and works as sort of like an independent handler, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the details of the second node. And one other thing to point out uh, about SCAN as uh, Tariq is moving on with the configuration. Um, if, if you're familiar with DNS, uh, SCAN is, uh, is very, very closely related. It, it essentially is a DNS service that runs on the cluster. That, that's kind of the technology that it uses. Um, and then there are some other things under the covers that you have to learn in order to, to set it up and use it correctly. But um, that's like, if you're learning about SCAN, then it's good to read up and learn a bit about DNS because they're very closely related. Thanks, Jeremy. Next step, what I'm going to do is establish SSH connectivity. Now, this is also a new feature with 11G R2. I can basically set up SSH connectivity or user equivalence right within my grid installation OUI process instead of manually performing all those steps. Uh, as was the case with the prior versions of setting up uh, clusterware. So as you can see, it's automatically doing everything in the background to set up the user equivalence requirement. Actually, this is a quite great feature in LevenG Release 2. You don't need to manually configure the SSH. Okay, we'll set up successfully. And quickly testing it, moving on to the next screen. Now because, as Jeremy pointed out, their scan is heavily reliant on DNS, and because we do not have a DNS server as part of this virtual environment, it will fail as part of our pre-clusterware installation CRS inst checks. And Jeremy will give you an idea about 
how the checks work. So I'm selecting automatic storage manage management as my Cozy application. Now one thing to remember here in the screen is that the grid home has to be outside of the base Oracle base. Oracle. It has to be Go ahead. Go ahead, say it. Yeah, you need to mention that uh, the OCR that we are creating it will be placed on ASM disk. Whereas in Langley release 2, our prior version, we cannot put our OCR in ASM disks. So it's a new feature in Langley release 2. Thanks, Sayed. So here I, I selected four of my disks as part of the Data 1 external redundancy ASM disk group. And Jeremy can tell you about the different types of redundancy that exist. This is requisite checks. Um, so the types there's just three kinds of redundancy: external, normal, and high redundancy. And really, those correspond with no mirroring. Um, mirroring, sort of simple mirroring, where there's two copies of every data, and then mirroring where there are three copies of every important piece of data. Um, and then there are sort of, uh, there are some, it's, it's not quite that simple, but that is the easiest way to explain. So there, in the, at, the, uh, at the high level of mirroring, sometimes there are certain things that are mirrored three times, certain things that are mirrored twice, and depending on the profile. But at a, at a basic high level, that's, that's what they are. In earlier versions of ASM, they recommended not uh, mixing and matching your redundancy. So if you if you were doing it um, RAID setup external, they didn't recommend also in addition doing it with ASM as well. And there were problems with that before. I've been told that those problems have been removed and it's okay to do it now, but at least personally, I still feel it's overkill. And also one thing we have forgotten, Tariq, that uh, people who are not uh, used to Levengi release 2, the OEI look and feel is totally different in contrast to the previous releases. Absolutely. Okay, so let me quickly walk you through, along with my co-panelists, of what we just did. While the OUI is running and setting up the grid infrastructure, which is basically a consolidated um, version of clusterware plus automatic storage management. So what we're basically doing live today is setting up a two-node Oracle VRAC cluster. I call it the VRAC. That's not an official term, but kind of simplifies things in, in understanding that it's being set up on a virtual environment as opposed to a physical environment. One of the biggest prohibiting factors in setting up learning uh, and knowing more about Oracle Rack is the need for dedicated hardware, specifically the need for shared storage. So setting up the, taking the virtual route basically alleviates that problem and allows us to learn more and practice um, Oracle Rack. Uh, 